Just before we jump into today's video, I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor Squarespace. If you're looking to build a beautiful website and online presence, they are your guys. More on them in a bit. Technology is an incredible thing. Even as this script was being written, it was being periodically backed up in the cloud, which means that at a moment's notice, it can be immediately picked up on another device anywhere else in the world. And by the time you're watching this, it will have already been uploaded to YouTube, whereupon it will be accessible to billions of people across the globe, if only billions millions of people watched. Although we rarely think about this oh, when we're watching videos, sending emails, or backing up files, keeping the internet functional requires storing an exceptional amount of data. This data, in large part, is stored in data centers filled with servers built wherever it is logistically possible to do so. However, the conventional data center is subject to a number of issues. Firstly, although there is a high demand for data storage pretty much everywhere nowadays, it is not always practical or logistically possible to build them where they are needed. Secondly, these data centers, much like any other piece of computer equipment, produce a lot of heat, and the cooling systems required to deal with this problem are often highly complex and expensive to run. Now, as you guys know, I'm all about simplifying my life, and that's why I love Square. Space. It made setting up my own website super easy, super simple, and now that it's set up, I don't even have to think about it. There's no updates, there's no patches, it's just there and it's done. Maybe I'll update it very occasionally, just content-wise, and uh, but mostly it's just, it's just there. You don't have to think about it. It's beautiful, done, easy. Plus, with Squarespace, there's tons of extra features, like maybe you want to monetize your content so you doesn't love an extra revenue stream, and that's where some like member areas comes in. It allows you to set up a place for people to access exclusive content that you're making. They've also got email campaigns, which are a game changer. The templates are sleek, they're professional, and you can customize them to match your brand's vibe. And let's not forget about analytics tools. If you've got a website, you really should be about the data, and Squarespace makes it easy to track who's visiting your site and how they're interacting with your content. Another awesome feature is the ability to collect donations. You can support your cause by gathering contributions through PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo. It's a great way to make a positive impact and support what you care about. And those are just a few of the many features that Squarespace has to offer. So look, if you're ready to launch your website and grow your business, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go through my unique URL and you'll save 10% off your first website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash megaprojects. And now back to today's video. So, is there a viable alternative to these land-based centers? Well, let us find out together as we take a look into the possible future of storage underwater data centers. Although the idea of underwater data centers has been kicking around for many years now, the concept as we now know it was first proposed by Microsoft employee Sean James about 10 years ago. During Think Week, a Microsoft initiative in which employees are encouraged to put forward ideas they believe may be revolutionary to the tech industry, James, drawing on his years of experience in the Navy, proposed an amalgamation of previously existing technology in submarines and that of data storage centers. The idea immediately garnered a huge amount of interest, and it wasn't long before the concept was put to Norm Whitaker, the head of special projects for Microsoft. To quote Whitaker, as we started exploring the space, it started to make more and more sense. We had a mind-bending challenge, but also a chance to push boundaries. It would not be long before the concept, codenamed Project Natic, began to take physical form. The first benefits became apparent almost immediately. Traditionally, data centers can take a very long time to build due to the logistical issues involved. Land has to be purchased, planning permission has to be obtained, people have to be given time to object to that planning permission. The majority of this is no longer an issue if the project is based offshore. In fact, the first prototype took only 90 days to construct. So, who exactly do you go to in order to have such a module constructed? Well, in this case, Microsoft chose a company called Naval Group, a French marine engineering company who, in spite of their uninspiring name, have about 400 years of experience designing and building seaworthy vessels. After being provided with some general specifications, one of these being that the final product should closely resemble a shipping container in both size and weight so that future versions could easily be transported by both land and sea, Naval Group successfully designed and built the first of these potentially game-changing vessels. Borrowing heavily from their experience in building submarines, the company fitted the module with a water-based cooling system. The system pumped seawater through heat sinks attached to the back of the 12 racks of servers inside before returning the heated water to the ocean. 
One of the major benefits of using such a system is that the ocean provides a pretty much limitless supply of cold water. This greatly reduces energy consumption, as there is no need to run an additional water cooler as might be required when using a sealed system that recycles water over and over again. Once the module had been completed, it was put through rigorous testing to ensure that it was in fact watertight before being transported to the Orkney Islands in Scotland on the back of an 18-wheeler truck. Once there, it was filled with nitrogen, attached to a huge concrete block, and transported about half a mile out to sea before being gently lowered to the seabed 117 feet below. Once divers had connected the umbilical cord, a huge bundle of cables designed to transfer both data and electrical power, the center was brought online. Although this in itself was an incredible achievement, the real challenge for the data center had only just begun. For the next two years, those 12 racks of servers would run continuously beneath the waves with no physical human interaction at all. Although it was possible for the team at Microsoft to interact with them remotely, if anything went wrong with the hardware, there was nothing that they could do about it. At the end of this two-year period, this data center was retrieved from the bottom of the ocean, pressure washed clean, and opened up. Although the team at Microsoft had high hopes for the project, what they discovered after analyzing all of the equipment surpassed their expectations. When compared with identical servers running at an on-land facility, the servers contained within the underwater module had suffered one-eighth of the failure rate. To put that another way, the servers that had been stored underwater were 87.5% more reliable. But why? Why was this the case? Well, according to Microsoft, there are many factors to be taken into consideration here. Firstly, at the depths that the module was submerged to, the temperature is not only very cold, but also very constant. This constantly low temperature is almost always beneficial to any computer hardware. Secondly, due to the fact that the atmosphere within the module did not have to sustain any form of life, it could be fully optimized to increase server longevity. It was for this reason that the module was filled with nitrogen. Nitrogen is incredibly unreactive, and unlike oxygen, it wouldn't cause any corrosion with the hardware. Thirdly, and perhaps most obviously, the complete lack of human interaction meant that no accidental damage was likely to occur. No engineers accidentally dislodging components while carrying out maintenance, no cables being damaged because people were moving things around, and nothing was just absentmindedly unplugged. Not only had the experiment been an undeniable success, but according to Microsoft, it proved a lot of useful information that could be implemented to improve more traditional land-based centers. So, what's next? The next stage of Project Natic is still very much shrouded in secrecy. However, a combination of leaked information and speculation from various experts suggests that the next version will be somewhat more ambitious. Plans have emerged online which appear to depict a long steel frame capable of holding 12 modules similar to the one used off of the Orkney Islands. If we assume that each cylinder will hold 40 racks of servers, then the entire structure should be capable of containing 10,368 servers altogether. If we also assume that each of these 12 cylinders contain the same amount of data storage as the one previously used, Stage 3 should be capable of storing in excess of 331 petabytes. That's uh, 331 million gigabytes. Now, to put this in some sort of perspective, one hour of 4K video takes up about 50 gigabytes on average, depending on frame rate and compression, of course. Now, this means that the proposed data center would be capable of storing approximately 6.6 .6 million hours of 4K video. So, where is this data center? Well, as previously stated, the whole project is shrouded in a lot of secrecy. Microsoft appeared to be reluctant to even confirm that the plans are genuine, let alone give a proposed time frame for deployment. Fortunately for the advancement of this concept, they are not the only company who are looking to move data storage underwater. Although there are rumors that Google, Amazon, and Facebook may be carrying out their own research, none of them have gone public with any information on this, nor did they respond when contacted for comments. However, there is at least one exciting proposal in the pipeline. During the first months of 2021, Beijing Highlander Digital Technology deployed an experimental underwater module in the city of Zhuhai containing four racks of servers. Unlike Microsoft, they appear to be in somewhat of a rush to get the future project up and running as uh, later that same year they announced a somewhat ambitious project. Beijing Highlander Digital Technology plans to have 100 underwater data center modules fully functional by 2025. According to an article on digitalinfra.com, they will, quote, be deployed in the 
city of Sanya, which resides in the southern portion of China's Hanan Islands, and will be used to provide cheap, environmentally friendly data storage as well as the far greater internet speeds that are required to, in order to cope with rapidly rising demand. Meanwhile, back in the US, one company is planning to take the underwater concept to a much more extreme level. Subsea Cloud has released plans to construct data centers which would be based 3,000 meters or about 10,000 feet beneath the surface of the ocean. Claiming to have designed a module that is far simpler than those used by Microsoft, Subsea Cloud plans to use a conventional shipping container equipped with a system that will allow the internal pressure to equalize as the module is submerged. Obviously, this will be considerably cheaper to produce than the sealed pressure vessels used by Microsoft and Beijing Highlander. But what is to be gained by having these modules located so far beneath the surface? Well, according to Subsea CEO Maxi Reynolds, uh, the answer is physical security. She believes that in placing data centers three kilometers below the surface, it will make them completely invulnerable to physical attack. In an interview given to Data Center Dynamics, she said, You can't access these pods with divers. You're going to need some very disruptive equipment. You can't do it with a submarine, they don't go deep enough. So you're going to need a remote operated vehicle, ROV, and those are very trackable. It takes care of a lot of the physical side of security. The company are hoping that these allegedly impenetrable modules will be of great interest to both the military and financial sectors. Whether or not this concept is actually viable remains to be seen. The company claimed to have carried out one proof of concept testing, but at the time of writing, they've been rather reluctant to make the results of this testing available to the wider public. As with all the projects that we've discussed today, the question of whether or not underwater data centers will be a viable concept in the future will only be answered when they are brought online and tasked with dealing with real-world applications. That being said, the results so far do appear to be very promising. Not only do they show potential to vastly reduce the amount of greenhouse gases produced by the data storage industry, but through the use of tidal generated electricity, it has even been demonstrated that it's possible to run them with 100% renewable power. In fact, this is one of the reasons that Microsoft chose the Scottish coast as the location to base its tests. There is one other huge benefit to these centers. Traditional land-based data storage facilities use an incredible amount of fresh water for cooling. In many countries around the world, this water is precious and could be far more usefully utilized as drinking water or to irrigate crops. With underwater data centers, this water waste is completely eliminated due to the fact that they use water from the ocean. But these ecological benefits aside, it is far more likely that big companies will adopt this technology for the simple reason that, in the long run, they're going to be cheaper to run, cheaper to construct, and will greatly improve product reliability.